The chain rule, level 4. Alright, so now we are going to go over examples that require the use of all the derivative techniques learned so far. Are you ready? Let's go through these examples. Find a derivative of r of x equals secant squared of x plus tangent squared of x. So here, we need to use the sum rule to find a derivative of the individual functions. But first, recall that secant squared of x and tangent squared of x is the same thing as secant of x raised to the power of 2 plus tangent of x raised to the power of 2. So now, find a derivative. We apply the derivative to each term. In order to find a derivative of each term, we actually need to use a chain rule for each one. Find a derivative of secant squared, so we should be pros finding the outer and the inner functions by now. For the first expression, the outer function is x squared, and the inner function is secant of x. So that leads that the derivative of r of x is going to be equal to 2 times secant of x times secant times tangent, plus the derivative of tangent of x squared. The outer function is x squared, and the inner function is tangent of x. So using the chain rule, we have 2 times tangent of x times secant squared of x. So reducing the expression, we have the following. And combining like terms, we have the final derivative to be equal to 4 times secant squared of x times tangent of x. All right, let's try the next example. Find a derivative of the quantity 1 plus 4x to the power of 5 times the quantity 3 plus x minus x squared raised to the power of 8. All right, so first, we see that we actually have a product of two functions. Specifically, the quantity 1 plus 4x to raised to the power of 5 and the quantity 3 plus x minus x squared raised to the power of 8. So we actually need to use product rule. So the product rule says we take the derivative of the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. Now notice that in order to take the derivative of the functions, we actually need to apply the chain rule. So we apply the chain rule here. So the outer function is x to the power of 8, and the inner function is 3 plus x minus x squared. Applying the chain rule, we have the derivative to be equal to 8 times quantity 3 plus x minus x squared raised to the power of 7, times the quantity 1 minus 2x. The derivative for this expression also requires a chain rule. The outer function is x to the power of 5, and the inner function is the quantity 1 plus 4x. Using the chain rule, we have that the derivative is equal to 5 times the quantity 1 plus 4x raised to the power of 4 times 4 which can be simplified as 20 times the quantity 1 plus 4x raised to the power of 4. So now that we have our derivatives, we could finish carrying out the product rule. So here we factor out a 4, the quantity 1 plus 4x raised to the power of 4, and the quantity 3 plus x minus x squared raised to the power of 7. Simplifying the expression and collecting like terms, we have the following expression. And finally, the final derivative, r of x, is equal to 4 times the quantity 1 plus 4x raised to the power of 4, times the quantity 3 plus x minus x squared raised to the power of 7 times the quantity negative 21 x squared plus 9x plus 17. All right, let's try the next one. Find a derivative of r of x equals the square root of the quantity z minus 1 over z plus 1. So first, we need to rewrite this expression into a derivative friendly form. So we can rewrite the radical expression as a fraction of power. And now here, we see that this is a composition of functions. So we need to apply the chain rule. The outer function is equal to x to the power 1 half, and the inner function is equal to z minus 1 over z plus 1. In order to use the chain rule, we need to find the derivatives of the outer and the inner function. So the derivative of the outer function is equal to 1 half times x to the power of negative 1 half, after applying the power rule. So now the inner function requires the quotient rule, because we are dealing with a quotient. So applying the quotient rule to find the derivative of the outer function, we have that the derivative is equal to z plus 1 times the derivative of z minus 1 minus the quantity z minus 1 times the derivative of z plus 1 all over the quantity z plus 1 squared. Collecting like terms and distributing the negative sign, we have that the final derivative of the outer function is equal to 2 over the quantity z plus 1 squared. Now that we have our derivatives, we can finish applying the chain rule. So the derivative of r of x is going to be equal to 1 half times the quantity z minus 1 over z plus 1 raised to the power of negative 1 half times 2 over the quantity z plus 1 squared. Now here we could distribute the negative 1 half to, to the numerator and the denominator. And remembering that negative exponents are just reciprocals, you could rewrite the expression as 
the quantity z plus 1 raised to the power 1 half over z minus 1 raised to the power 1 half times 1 over z plus 1 squared. So now here we have a quantity with the same base. So using the rules of exponents, we can subtract the exponents, which leads us to the final answer of 1 over the quantity z plus 1 raised to the power 3 halves times the quantity z minus 1 raised to the 1 half. Alternatively, we could rewrite the expression using radical signs. Again, either answer is acceptable. Let's try the next example. Find a derivative of r of x equals e raised to the power of x times cosine of x. So here, we are dealing with a composition of functions where the outer function is equal to e to the x and the inner function is equal to x times cosine of x. We use the chain rule, and in order to use the chain rule, we need the derivative of the outer function and the inner function. The derivative of the inner function is equal to e to the x, and in order to find a derivative of the outer function, we actually need to apply the product rule. So applying the product rule, we have that the derivative of g of x is equal to x times the derivative of cosine of x plus cosine of x times the derivative of x, which is equal to negative x times sine of x plus cosine of x. So carrying on the chain rule, we have that the derivative of r of x is going to be equal to e to the power of x times cosine of x times the quantity negative x sine of x plus cosine of x. And since we find an expression, we have that the final derivative is equal to e raised to the power of x times cosine of x times the quantity cosine of x minus x times sine of x. Let's try the next example. Find a derivative of r of x is equal to x times e raised to the negative x squared. Okay, so here, hopefully you notice that we are actually dealing with a product of two functions. One product is x, and the second product is e raised to the negative x squared. So we need to apply the product rule. So in order to find the product rule, we need to find the derivatives of each function. So, so the derivative of x is just 1. So the derivative of g of x requires the application of the chain rule. Here, the outer function is e to the x, and the inner function is equal to negative x squared. So applying the chain rule, we have that the derivative is equal to e raised to the negative x squared times negative 2x, which signifies to negative 2x times e raised to the negative x squared. Now that we have our derivatives, we can finish applying the product rule. So applying the product rule, we have the following. And factoring out an e raised to the negative x squared, we have that the final derivative of r of x is equal to e raised to the power of negative x squared times the quantity 1 minus 2x squared. All right, this is the final example. Find the derivative of r of x equals e raised to the power of 2x over the quantity e to the x plus e to the negative x. All right, so here it requires the application of the quotient rule because we are dealing with equations. So in order to use the quotient rule, we need to find the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. So the derivative of the numerator requires the application of the chain rule where the outer function is e to the x and the inner function is 2x. So applying the chain rule, we have that the derivative is equal to 2 times e raised to 2x. The derivative of the denominator is going to be equal to e to the 2x minus e to the negative x. So the second term required application of the chain rule. So carrying out the quotient rule, we have the following. And so an expression and collect like terms, the derivative of r of x is equal to the quantity e to the power of 3x plus 3 times e to the x over the quantity e to the x plus e to the negative x raised to the power of 2. Now here's a different way of solving the problem. We can actually use algebraic manipulation to rewrite the expression in a different form. So starting with r of x, we could actually multiply by 1, okay? but not just any 1. We are going to multiply by e to the x over e to the x, which is equal to 1. So technically, anything multiplied by 1 is just itself. So I am not changing the overall expression. I'm just rewriting it in a different form. So r of x can be rewritten as e to the power of 3x over the quantity e to the power of 2x plus 1. Once again, we still need to apply the quotient rule. So we need to find the derivative of the numerator and of the denominator. The derivative of the numerator is equal to 3 times e to the 3x after applying the chain rule. And the derivative of the denominator is equal to e raised to the power of 2x plus 1 where we applied the chain rule on the first term. And remember, the derivative of a constant is just zero. So we write an expression and collect like terms. We have the following. And here we factor out an e raised to the power of 3x, and we simplify the expression. So we have that the final answer is e raised to the power of 3x times the quantity e to the power of 2x plus 3 divided by the quantity e 
to the power of 2x plus 1 raised to the power of 2. So this answer and the previous answer are written differently, but they're the same answer. And again, either answer will be acceptable. All right, in our next and final video on the chain rule, we will learn how to find the derivative of longer chains by adding another link.